God, the prophet of God, that's going to be speaking to us. We're blessed to have him here. This is not video. This is here. He's right at 5201 South Flamingo Road at our home, the Pentecostals of Cooper City, bringing us the word. And so right now, open your heart and let's receive the man of God as he comes. Brother Kleinitz, we're honored to have you here at POCC in your home. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, and praise the Lord, everyone. What a joy it is to be here, be a part of what God is doing in the Pentecostals of Cooper City, and to have the opportunity to come into your homes where all of you are worshiping, taking time out for prayer, having family devotion, either with your whole family, if you're like my wife and I, it's just her and I at home these days, or maybe you're just a single. And you're there in the presence of the Lord and the holy angels of God. I'm very blessed to have my wife traveling with me. And so she's been with me this morning and tonight. And to be back here in this wonderful church. The only thing is we're missing all of you. And it'll be a wonderful day when the opportunity comes that we can all be together back here in the house of God. Worshiping the Lord together. Amen. But as we preach this morning to everything, there is a season. And uh, to everything, there's a time. And God is working and moving during this time. And we're reaching people and touching lives that perhaps we would have never reached or never touched if this situation hadn't occurred with the virus and quarantine and shutdown and forcing us to emphasize online video streaming. It's allowed us to touch people we may not have touched otherwise. So if one soul is saved, it's worth it. Amen. It's worth it. Give honor to your wonderful pastor and his wife and the family and the staff of this church. When you get a chance, if you're a member of this church, you've been watching these online streaming services. When you get a chance, you need to send a text or an email and let this hardworking staff know how much you appreciate them for keeping things going bringing praise and worship and prayer and word and anointing into your home and not leaving you stranded out there during this season. And they've worked very hard behind the scenes. And uh, it'd be wonderful if you give them a great word of encouragement. Amen. We were able to go get us a little bite to eat today at uh, one of the cafes that has opened up with 25% occupancy. And I was wearing my mask. And when I went in, uh, they thought I was pastor. Everybody always thinks we're, they get us mixed up. They say, are you brothers? I said, oh yeah, we're brothers. <laughs> Amen. That's why we're brothers. Amen. And uh, one of the workers there is here tonight, came over to listen to the live stream broadcast, was playing the piano beautifully today. And uh, we enjoyed your piano playing. Amen. So hopefully you'll be blessed tonight by the word of the Lord. Amen. You blessed us. Now maybe the Lord can bless you. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 27 and 28. Hebrews 12, 27, 28. Uh, a unique thing you did this morning after the service. Well, there was two unique things now that I bring that up. After the service was should have gone off, the praise and worship team just continued to worship and play and sing. And probably for about 20, 30 minutes, we just stayed here and bask in the presence of the Lord. Such a response of those that were able to be here on the platform. And then um, you have, I don't know how to direct you to it. I think it's a Zoom call or something. You have a virtual foyer uh, right after the service. And I was able to come on and see some of you and talk to some of you in the foyer. That was nice. Uh, did, I've not seen that before, and I thought that was a really unique opportunity. Hebrews 12, 27 and 28. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken. As of things that are made, temporary things. That those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and with godly fear. 
I'd like to preach to you for a few minutes tonight about the unshakable church. And not only the unshakable church as a whole, but the unshakable you as an individual. Because the things that can be shaken will be removed, but the things that are not shaken are going to remain. Lord Jesus, we pray right now over this word. We pray that it will be bread to our hungry spiritual souls. We pray, Lord, that this word will bring understanding, that this word will give us direction, that it will cause our faith to rise and our commitment and our determination to rise, that we will be one that will not be shaken. We will not be moved, but we will lay hold on eternal life, hold fast to our profession of faith, and we will see you one day soon in the clouds. And everybody said in Jesus' name, and you may be seated get comfortable there in your house and let me share with you the word of the Lord these verses of scripture are a warning they are an admonition they challenge you and I to prepare it lets us know that there's going to be things that are shaking uh, there's a phrase that a little idiom that we use that kind of encapsulates all of the King James English here into a very understandable sentence and it's simply this you might recognize it everything that can be shaken will be shaken everything that can be shaken will be shaken and this admonition is all over the scripture build your house upon the rock the Bible said because the storm is coming and when the storm comes the house and the foundation of the house is going to be tested. There's going to be pressure put on it. There's going to be pressure to destroy it. But if you build your house on the rock, then when the wind blows and the storm comes and the pressure arrives and, and you're two months in quarantine and, and virus concerns and social transition and nothing is like everything is shifting the winds have been blowing the social winds the pressure spiritual pressure but if we have been building on the rock then we will be able to withstand the storms when they come the devil roams to and fro seeking whom he may devour if you've ever watched any of those animal kingdom videos that show you the lion as he is stalking the herd and the herd comes through maybe hundreds of them maybe thousands of them the lion doesn't go for those that are in the center of the herd he goes for the stragglers out on the edge he finds one that's a long way out from the herd one that's straggling behind on the edge and that one that is alone and isolated becomes the focus of his attention to become the prey that's why many years ago I decided as a young man living for God, I wanted to be right in the middle of what God was doing. I wanted to be right in the heartbeat of it. Uh, when we were having church services, when they gave a time to come to the altar, I wanted to go to the altar. When it was time, let's all stand, I stood. When they said, let's raise our hands and worship the Lord, I raised my hands and worshiped God. When it was time to give in the offering, I gave. When it was time to pray, I prayed. Because I decided the safest place to be is in the middle of the herd. Be right in the center of the flow of what God is doing. Be right in the middle of the flow. of, what, And I've decided wherever revival is, I want to be in revival. I want to be where faith is. I want to be where victory is. I want to be where God is working. I don't want to live out on the edges in fear and doubt and torment and, and, and flirting with and playing with worldly things. I want to be living the godly lifestyle. When you come out of the world into the church, you just need to come all the way out. Back in the old church in the early days, we used to have a saying, living on the fence. And it's the most miserable place to try to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. You've got to choose you this day whom you will serve. 
And I found the safest place in the storm. The safest place from the predator. The safest place during discouraging times is to be right in the heartbeat. Fully out of the world and fully in the church. Because the Bible tells us in the last days, perilous times will come. Dangerous times will come. And then outlines those times to let us know what the social character was going to be like. And we are reminded even then that we have to live in the power of God. It's never safe to be carnal, to be ungodly, to live just sort of halfway for the Lord. You've got to be fully persuaded. You have to be fully engaged. I've taught my sons. I have a little phrase I've used through the years. Uh, I would say to them when they were getting ready to do something, I would say, sons, if you're going to be a bear... Be a grizzly. In other words, if you're going to be a bear, be a big bear. If you're going to be a bear, be the biggest, baddest bear there is. In other words, if you're going to do it, do it with all your heart. Whatsoever you find to do, do it with all your heart. There is a safety in passion. There is a safety. You look at these, these folks that go into battle, and they are fully engaged. You cannot go into battle paying half attention. You have to be on point. You have to be fully engaged. You have to be very alert. And I have come tonight to remind us that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Take heed to the doctrine, said the Bible. Take heed to the doctrine. Put on the whole armor of God. This is not a time to go out half-dressed. We need the helmet of salvation and the shield of faith. And the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have to have uh, the sword of the spirit. We have to have our loins girt about with truth. We have to be fully dressed. Fully equipped. We need all that we have. This is the time to worship with all of our heart. Pray with all of our heart. Read the word of God with desire to understand. We cannot get by on just a little bit of effort. It's time to be 100% engaged because everything that can be, will be. Here's one that really speaks to me personally. Let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. You know, that's not written to a new convert. That's not written to a person who's just now trying to get their walk with God going, just now trying to come out of the world. They know they need God. Pastor, pray for me. I'm struggling with the world. Pray for me. I've got all kinds of addictions. Pray for me. I'm just really struggling to get faithful to the house of God. They know they're in trouble. They know they're barely making it. It said, let him that thinks he stand. That's people like me. I've been preaching for 35 years. I, I, I don't really think this week I'm getting ready to go backslide. Not really got anything on the agenda. Ready to just go back to the world. I wouldn't really even probably know how if I tried to. Wouldn't know what to do. Not really getting ready to run off into anything. I, I pretty much feel confident that I'm standing. That I'm living for God. That this is who I am and what I do. That warning is to people like me. Let him that thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. Because we're not there yet. And things are starting to happen that I never anticipated happening. Now, when I was the first young pastor trying to build the church in Virginia, I preached to a lot of empty pews. But I thought those days were behind me. I never saw the day that I'd go into big old beautiful churches with balconies and all this stuff and preach to empty pews. I never saw the day that I'd be sitting in my back bedroom turned into a studio with cameras and lights and a computer and I'd be preaching to the screen and pointing at myself while I was preaching. Never dreamed these kind of things would come. And who knows what else is on the horizon. Who knows what we will face. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. So I've made up my mind I need to tighten up. I've made up my mind I need to make my calling and election sure. I can't take my salvation for granted. I'm not there yet. We haven't made it all the way in yet. And I've got to be fully persuaded. So I've come to tell you everything that can be shaken will be. 
In other words, everything that has the nature that it is vulnerable. It has some kind of a flaw that would make it vulnerable to be shaken. If you are easily discouraged, you're probably discouraged right now. See, if you can be, you will be. Because when it, the going gets tough, when the winds begin to blow, when the ground beneath your feet begins to shake, when nothing is like it was, if you are easily entrapped in sin, you probably are. If you're easily confused about the truth of God's word, you're probably confused right now. If you're easily frightened, you will be. If you're easily offended, you will be. If you quickly lose faith, you will lose your faith. Everything that can be. If you are of the nature, if it is your, well, it's just my personality. Well, if it's your personality, if it's your philosophy, if it's your character, if you live with your feelings on your shoulder and you are just very easily upset, I promise you, you're going to get upset. If you are very easily moved from your faith, you're going to be moved because we are living in a time when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. We're living in the hour where there is going to be opposition to what you believe. You walk out of the church and express your faith out there in this world, there's going to be somebody to challenge your faith. There's going to be somebody to tell you what you believe is not correct. There's going to be somebody to tell you there is no God. There's going to be somebody to tell you some experience or some situation to try to convince you that God is not real, that your faith is not valid. You've got to know what you believe. You've got to be fully persuaded. This is no time to just be going on by our emotions. One of the things we've learned in this, in this shutdown period is you have to have faith to walk with God. Amen. You can't live on just your emotion. You have to be on the solid rock of the Word of God. Of what God's Word says. You better, you better read your Bible and know what the Bible says because there'll be somebody to challenge every aspect of your faith. If you like to give uh, finances to the church and sow by faith, believe in God will take care of you. There'll be somebody to challenge the validity of your giving. There'll be somebody to challenge your worship. If you're a worshiper, you like to say hallelujah, praise the Lord, and leap for joy, and, and dance around in the Holy Ghost, and, and you're very expressive. There'll be somebody, maybe in your family, to tell you that's not right. You shouldn't be that way. Whatever it is you believe, we are people who believe strongly that there's only one God. We are one God people. We are oneness people. We believe here, O Israel, the Lord our God, He is one Lord. There'll be somebody to tell you that's not true. All kinds of pagan idols, all kinds of pagan things going on. The spirit of antichrist is in the world telling you and pressuring you that everything, you've got to know what you believe. It's time to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God because if you can be shaken off the truth, if you can be shaken off of your understanding, right now, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. You say, well, that just, my goodness, preacher, how bad does it get? Well, I'm going to tell you how bad it gets. <laughs> it gets so bad, the Scripture says, that if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. Those that have been living for God, been walking with the Lord. This challenges me that I could be a preacher for 35 years and then things happen in the culture or socially or in the world that would be so extreme that they could shake me off my foundation. I want to be fully persuaded. I want to have my mind made up. I want to, when I first got in the church, when I was a young man, when I was coming out of the world, out of drinking alcohol and doing drugs and going to parties and all the things that I was involved in. And I came in the church and I was struggling to try to try to shake loose of all those bondages and addictions and things that had a hold of me. In those days, they sang a little chorus in the church and it, and it simply said, I've got the Lord before me and the world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. And from the second row seat, at the Apostolic Lighthouse Church in Frederick, Maryland, I planted my feet. And I said, I have the Lord before me. I've got the world behind me. 
No turning back. I made up my mind all the way back in, what, 1984 that would have been, that I wasn't turning back. Let the wind blow. Let the rain fall. Let the earth shake. I have a friend. His name is Jesus. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. I made up my mind I wasn't turning back. I wasn't getting offended. I wasn't going to be upset. I, I, I was out of the world and glad to be out of the world. So I, I kind of adapted that mindset that David had. Just to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. I said, man, I'm just glad to be here. You don't know me. I'm just glad to be in the house. I would close my eyes sometimes in the middle of a Sunday night preaching service and I would just say, Lord, I can't believe I'm really here. I'm really in the church. I'm really living for God. I'm really doing right. I could have died and been lost and lost my soul out there in the world. And here I was in the church and I said, Lord, doesn't matter. If they don't shake my hand, I'm coming back anyhow. If they don't acknowledge me, I'm coming back anyhow. If they don't ask me to say anything, I'm coming back back anyhow i'm not going to be offended i'm you know what i was doing i was deciding i'm not one that's going to be easily shaken i'm not going to be easily moved i'm not going to be the weak link i'm not going to be the straggler i'm getting in the middle here and i'm going to fortify myself it, you're not going to run me out of here hallelujah amen i'm going to live for god and one of these days i'm going to make heaven my home now, with all this that I've said up till now, strong warning, strong concern, and there, there, is, a, there is a statement of victory. It's not said. It, it was said in the text that those things that cannot be shaken will remain. But in everything that can be shaken will be shaken, it's not said. But, but, it, but it's unsaid. It's latent. It, and it bubbles up in my spirit. Everything that can be shaken will be but not everything can be shaken. Everyone that can be shaken will be shaken, but not everyone will be shaken. I, I pastored in Virginia for 12 years. I watched people go through things that I couldn't imagine. They kept coming to church. They kept loving God. They kept a good attitude. It seemed like it didn't matter what happened to them. They had their mind made up. One writer in the Bible said, let a thousand fall on my left hand. Let ten thousand fall on my right. It shall not come nigh me. I've got my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock. I've got the Lord before me and the world behind me. I watched people come to church when they had financial problems and still give. I watched them come to church when they buried loved ones and were grieving and still worship God. I watched them when they were out of a home, when they were out of a job, when they were out of friends. I watched them go through horrible circumstances of life. And you'd wonder, how are they making it? But that door would open. They'd come through those doors. They'd find their place. And they'd begin to worship God. I found out and I began to learn as a young pastor, there are some unshakables in this world. There are people that no matter what seems to happen to them, no matter how unfair it is, no matter how unjust it is, no matter what is said to them, somehow they pick themselves up, they dust themselves off, and they go forward. I watched some of them fail and mess up and make mistakes uh, and they'd come down to the altar and pray through again. They just kept dusting themselves off. They just kept getting up. They didn't let failures keep them out. They didn't let other people's attitudes keep them out. They didn't let their family keep them out. I watched people's family reject them and they would still come to church and worship God. I would wonder as a pastor, how in the world are they making it? How how are they standing? How are they enduring? But that's when I learned there are un some unshakable people in this world that it doesn't seem to matter what comes their way. They're going to live for God. And one of these days, they're going to be shouting on the hills of glory. One of these days, heaven's gates are going to open wide. One of these days, they're going to shed these old bars of bones and they're going to fly to a better place. They've, they've got their self set on a heavenly kingdom. Amen. 
Amen. They're like that other old song we used to sing. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. So maybe you have to worship God from your living room, but I've come to tell you tonight, you can be saved from your living room. You can be saved from quarantine. You can be saved and shut down if you've got your mind made up. Hey, let me tell you, those that uh, are going to backslide are going to backslide. Everybody's not going to make it. Some people are going to backslide. Paul talked about Demas. said, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Demas walked with him for a while, but then turned back to the world. Judas, Judas ate lunch and breakfast and dinner with the Lord Jesus Christ. Walked among the disciples himself. He had a front row seat. He was on the inner circle. And right there from that privileged place, Judas lost out his place. And, and, and now has lost his destiny and his name will not be in the foundations of the new Jerusalem and the apostle Paul it looks like was called to take Judas place and step in as an apostle born out of due season but for every Judas that fails for every Demas that backslides there's going to be an apostle Paul that says I worship by the way they call heresy <laughs> amen he said I, I choose to walk this way I am going to live for God no matter what it's discouraging. Let me just talk plain to you. Easy to talk plain to you when I can't see you out there. It's easily to get discouraged when great ministers of notable reputation, when they fail publicly, and great leaders that we thought were strong, and they go down. And, it, and the Bible even says when the mighty oaks fall, the little timbers go with it. That big oak will fall down and there'll just be some collateral damage. There, there are people that backslide simply because other people backslide. Now, I don't know about you. You know, I come from the old church. Back in the old church, if you were a musician or a guitar player or something and you wasn't living right, they set you down. You just wasn't allowed to come up and play no more until you got your heart right. And when you set somebody down, their whole family got upset. Now, they weren't set down, just the one person. But now they're all offended. Arms folded, won't worship God. And then the person that gets set down, they knew they weren't doing right. They pray through and get right. And after some time, maybe a few weeks or a few months, whatever, pastor says, hey, you're doing good. Get back up there and play. Now the other half of the church gets mad. Can you believe? After what they did, now they're just letting them get right back up there. Now here's the deal. All those other people, it was just one person we were dealing with. One person had a problem. One person was being dealt with. One person was being recovered. But everybody else was in the same battle. And I've watched some of that and made up my mind. You may like this. I decided early. You know, I got enough problems of my own. I can't afford to be lost over somebody else's problems. I'm doing good to overcome my own problems. I can't be upset just because you're upset. I can't get discouraged just because you're discouraged. I can't get offended just because you get offended. If you get mad at the pastor and get upset at the pastor and you don't want to talk to the pastor, I can't get offended just because you're offended. I got to save it for when I won't be offended all by myself. I got to save it for my own battle. <laughs> Amen. I don't want to use up all my opportunities on somebody else's issues. I made up my mind. I am not going to be collateral damage. It grieves me when I see great leaders fail. It grieves me when I see people of great passion lose out. And some of them, these days, all the failures are public. They go on Facebook and Twitter and make sure we all know how they're sinning and what they're doing. And it's right in our face and it grieves me. But I look at it and say, I'll pray for you. I'll pray that you're recovered. I'll pray that you find mercy. I find that you pray that you're a prodigal that comes home before it's too late. But I'm not getting in what you're in. I can't do it because someone else does. I can't let public opinion, if nobody else wants to live for God, I've got to live for God. If nobody in my family wants to live for God, I've got to live for God all by myself. 
If nobody else in the community wants to live for God, I gotta live for God. I have gotta be saved and I'm the one that's gonna stand before the Lord one day all by myself uh, and I've gotta hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So I've come to tell you, while some are gonna backslide, not everybody's gonna backslide. They say, well, you know, people just don't, people just don't worship like they used to. Well, maybe some people don't worship like they used to. Some people worship more than they ever have. There are people worshiping now in ways and by themselves and in environments, and they're really coming alive. They say, well, people just don't pray like they used to. Maybe some people don't pray. My wife's sitting here. She's been running a morning prayer call on conference call. Started it going on three years ago, two and a half years. Two and a half years ago. Every morning at 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., she's on the phone with over a hundred ladies that are in ministry, and they are praying together for an hour. And when I say they're praying, they're not praying quiet, silent, meditating prayers. They're praying, like really praying. And, and they are praying more than I've ever heard anybody pray. And they've been doing this for close to three years. So maybe some people have quit praying, but not everybody. Some people are praying more than they've ever prayed. They say, well... Well, the young people, the young people aren't living for God these days. It may be true that some people aren't living for God, some young people. But just this past year in St. Louis, back, remember back in the days when we could go to church? Back in those days, 35,000 young people went into the arena in St. Louis. Filled it up to capacity, worshiping and praising God. And they weren't just there. They were engaged. They were participating. They were worshiping. So not all the young people are on drugs. Not all the young people are vile and evil. Not all the young people are immoral. Plenty of that's going on. Everything that can be shaken is, but there are some people. They are part of an unshakable church. They are part, let me tell you, the church is going to survive COVID-19. The church is going to survive the virus. The church is going to survive the spirit of antichrist the church is going to make it we're coming out of here like a bride made ready for her husband we're coming out of here it's a glorious day of revival that is before us as a matter of fact the lord spoke to me back in the month of december and told me my wilderness season was over and from december till now i've been walking in the blessing of god the favor of god if i started telling you the things god has done for us and it's going right on through covid 19 I'm an evangelist. I travel for a living. I had 147,000 miles on Delta last year. I've not been on an airplane in two months. Last Sunday was the first time in two months I preached in a church building. I've been preaching to the computer for two months. I am basically been an unemployed person. <laughs> Amen. I had 19 meetings shut down in one single day. Canceled. 19 engagements canceled in one day. Five camp meetings canceled last week. I am unemployed, but I have not missed a bill. I've not missed a meal. I've paid my rent. The Lord has come through. God has been good. I'm telling you, you've got to hear me. God is doing something different with the church than He's doing with the world. The world may be going into the wilderness, but the church is coming out. The world may be coming under some judgment and plagues of God, but we're coming out. We're being blessed right in the middle of all this. I'm telling you, the safest place to be right now is in the church of the living God. This old ship of Zion has been on the the testy seas before we've come through the storms we've come through the floods we've come through the fire we've made it and we're going to make it this time you want to stay connected you want to stay with your faith don't get to thinking right now is the time to go out in the world i heard somebody on that crazy facebook media say if you've been wanting to quit your church now's the best time to do it that's the voice of the devil that is that voice that's looking for something that can be shaken is there a weak spot? Are you vulnerable? 
I want the devil to look in my eyes and see that I believe in one God. Amen. I want him to know you're looking at someone with a made up mind. I may not be perfect, but I'm pressing on. I don't have it all together, but I'm getting it together. Amen. If you're looking for someone to tempt with all of that, just go on down the road and look for someone else. Not everybody's going to compromise. Not everybody's going to fall into the devil's trap. Not everybody's going to get depressed. Not everyone's going to get discouraged. Not everyone's going to live in fear. There are going to be some people that it doesn't seem to matter what happens. They have their mind made up. They're unshakable. They're going to lift up their hands like Job and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. It looks like God is doing all this to me. And I don't know why he would. But I trust him that even though I can't understand it, I believe he loves me. I believe he's on my side. You've got to have a faith that's greater than your circumstances and be part of an unshakable church with an unshakable faith. Now I don't mean to be unsympathetic. But I'm going to make a strong statement. Whatever you're going through, whatever's challenging you, whatever is, is working to dislodge you, there will be somebody saved from a situation just like you're in. There'll be somebody that went through just what you went through, and they made it. If you struggled with that statement, this one's going to, be, going to hit you even harder. There are going to be people that go through worse situations than you've been through. Their life is going to be harder than your life. What happened to them is worse than what happened to you. And they're going to be saved. Now, I don't say that to compare you with other people. And to make a comp I say it for this reason. I say it to encourage you. You can be saved from whatever circumstance you're in. You can live for God no matter what's happened. I've seen single young people, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. They're, none of their family would live for God. Had to go pick them up and bring them to church. Their family would give them hell on earth when they got home. But somehow they made it living for God. I watched other people backslide when their whole family was praying with them to try to get them to come to church and be saved. The Apostle Paul kept his faith in prison. In a hole in the ground, Adam lost it in a garden paradise. It's not your circumstances. It's your heart and your mindset. Amen. This is, I'm glad I'm on video here and I can't see all your expressions because I don't know what you do with this, but Kenny Rogers sang a song called The Gambler. You got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away and know when to run a lot of good preaching in that song he said every hand's a winner and every hand's a loser you've got the key to surviving is you've got to know what to throw away and know what to keep let me tell you somebody else could take your hand the cards that life has dealt you they could take your hand and win with it Somebody could look at those good cards and bad cards, those good experiences and bad experiences. And they'd say, I'm going to get rid of that bitterness. I'm going to get rid of that anger. I'm going to get rid of that depression. And I'm going to believe God's going to give me something better and give me a better hand. Give me, kind of make this thing play a little better. Somebody could take your life and win with your life. Somebody could take your situation and work with it and give it to God and come out victorious on the other side. I've made up my mind. I want to, I want to do the best I can with whatever life has dealt me. Whatever strengths or weaknesses I have, you've got to decide right now. Hey, everything's not perfect. Amen. Everything's not the way it ought to be. There's a lot of injustice and struggling going on. Here we are. I've decided I'll live for God from my living room if I have to. I'll live for God if nobody else wants to. You've got to have your mind made up. I invite our musicians to come on the platform for our closing song. There's a beautiful verse in Proverbs 21 30. I'd like to preach a whole message on this. Maybe I'll come back and do it sometime. Proverbs 21 30. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. It may look like the devil has us checkmated. It may look like 
We didn't see this coming, but let me tell you, he didn't catch God off guard. You can't outmaneuver God. You can't outstrategize God. There is no strategy. There's no counsel. There's no wisdom. There's no devil or legion of devils that can come up with a plan so clever or diabolical to outmaneuver God. They thought they did. They thought they had him at Calvary's cross. They thought they had maneuvered him, couldn't do nothing with him, so they just kill him. And when he was hanging on that cross dying, and the blood was running from the nails in his hands and his feet, crown of thorns pressing blood down out of his brow, struggling for his last breaths, the devils of hell were rejoicing. They thought they had won the great battle. They had outmaneuvered the great Savior. He's dying. The Bible records the moment as the life left his body, his head dropped toward hell. He said, it is finished. <laughs> In other words, your plan is done. You did everything you intended to do. Your plan was completely executed. You're done. You've, you've played your best hand. You've done everything against me you could do. Now I'm coming down there for the keys to death, hell, and the grave. I'll be coming out of here victorious. They thought they had him. What they didn't know is they had just played into the divine strategy of all the ages. Made himself a little lower than the angels. He came down here to die that we could be saved. He shed his blood that we could be redeemed. While they were rejoicing, thought they'd win. What they actually did was release the greatest victory for the church that has ever been known. So much so that the aftermath of the battle was recorded. The devils in hell, here's what it says about the Calvary. If they had only known they would never have crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. If the devil could take back Calvary, he would. If he could take back the crucifixion, he'd never let him be crucified. Because he found out you can't outmaneuver God. You can't out strategize him. You brought your best strategy and all you did was release salvation for all the ages. If you're in your living room, those few that are here in the sanctuary, if you want to stand with me right here, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Right where you are, by yourself, you and God, it's time you lift your hands to the Lord. It's time you lift up your voice to God and say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Just what with my good things and my bad things. Here I am, Lord. I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you right now. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me. Fill me with your presence, God. I worship you. I give you glory. Right in the middle of this situation, I'm getting stronger in the Lord. The devil thought with church being shut down, I'd never find you, but here I am. Here I am, Lord. It didn't work. The devil, I've come to prophesy to somebody right now, the devil's plan against you did not work. It didn't work. You're unshakable. I prophesy you're going to be unmovable. You're going to get your feet planted. You're going forward and not backward. You're going to be saved and not lost. You're going to be strong and not weak. You're going to be victorious. You're not going to be a failure. I've come to speak into your life. There is victory in Jesus there is a way through this and you found it you have found it this old church is going to sail its way to victory and when the trumpet sounds one of these days we're leaving this old world and all its trouble we're out of here we're going on to be with Jesus come on shake yourself and say I shake off the world I'm going to be unshakable for Jesus I'm going to be solid for the Lord I'm going to live for God. Dad, if you're there in the home, get your family together. Lay your hands on one another. Pray for those babies. If they're just little babies, pray over them. If they're toddlers or young children, pray over them. Get the teenagers close by. Lay hands on one another. Turn your household right now into an unshakable uh, family that is built on a solid rock foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not going to be moved. Uh, come on, family. We're going to make it. Come on, husband. We're going to make it. 
make it. Come on, wife, we're gonna make it. Come on, we're gonna we're gonna survive this. We're gonna make it through. We're gonna make it through. I'm unshakable. I'm unshakable. I have faith in Jesus. Say it right out loud. Say it out loud. I have faith. My faith is not shaken. My faith is not shaken. I am a believer. Would you confess it right out loud? I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a believer. Come on, Dad. Let your children hear you say it out loud. Come on, Mom. Say it out loud. I am a believer. I will not be moved. gather around the altar if you're comfortable with that you're welcome to come and pray
over your family tonight. Would you declare that over your child tonight? The Lord has it under control. The Lord has it in, in his hand. And I'm going to follow you forward. powerful word we heard tonight just keep that in your heart be growing connecting to God and in the word thank God for what we heard thank God that we are not turning back we bless you God bless you hallelujah next Sunday morning we'll see you online and uh, share share these these links with your friends and your family so they can be encouraged. Share these links so they can get strength from the Word of God. I want to thank Brother and Sister Kleinitz for coming, taking time out to be here. What a blessing it's been to us this morning, tonight. And next Sunday will be another great blessed service. God bless you. Have a wonderful blessed week. Tomorrow the office is closed. There's, uh, the office is closed. There's no boxes of hope, nothing tomorrow. So, uh, and I want to say also, tomorrow is our very special day where we honor those who sacrificed and gave so much. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. And so today we just want to say thank you to all those that gave the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. And so we don't want to forget the reason for Memorial Day service. God bless you. God bless your homes. God bless your family, your children's brothers, sisters, moms, dads. In Jesus' name, we will see you online next Sunday. Stay connected during the week.